much for joining us this morning. How are you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. Awesome. It's uh, got to be a good feeling to know that uh, you've got a free trip to Paris lined up and you have a chance to become the 2013 Duel of Champions world champion. I mean, give us your thoughts. Run us through, you know, um, what were your thoughts going into this event? I mean, you won KublaCon back a couple months ago, and you've been thinking about this ever since. Give us, you know, how this past weekend went for you and what you're thinking about for Paris. Um, this, I guess I could say there's a heavy burden lifted off my shoulders, and then I can take out a week off, and then I can pick up a heavier backpack and put it on. Um, going into this weekend, I was I was pretty tense. I didn't know what to expect. Well, I knew exactly what to expect, but it was hard to prepare for all three people, and now I have to prepare for seven people who've been playing this game for a lot longer. Um, so I think that this weekend was a good warm-up for Paris. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, speaking of which, I mean, hey, we've we've only got two hours, and these are some long games, so I'm actually going to uh, kick off the first replay right off the bat so everybody can be watching those uh, while we're chatting. And guys, I definitely want you to be able to uh, chat with Smurf Burn. Yeah, this is a picture of Smurf. We don't, have <laughs> we don't have video of him. I see people in chat saying, man, you're skilled. You, you can move without moving. You can talk without moving your lips. That's awesome. <laughs> so the poker face is what what pulled me through. That's it, man. They don't even <laughs> they won't even expect what's what's coming with your uh, strategy. So let me actually load up this first replay so that we can get that going. And it looks like from just off the bat that this is going to be a uh, Demiria versus Sandalfin. Now. Smurf, first thing I know that a lot of people are going to notice, and, and I want your opinion on this as well, is North American players, um, yourself, Crixius, um, not as high of ELO as the European players. I mean, you were rocking a 1246 at this point, uh, and Crixius was at 1309 ELO. So not as high as what we would see normally in like the top European players, things like that. Um, does this worry you going into Europe? Do you feel like this is going to be a burden? Like, do you got to step um, your game up? Give me your thoughts. Not at all. To be honest, there's there's no rewards increase for higher ELO. Um, so for me, it was just a choice. Do I want to play test new decks or do I want to grind my ELO up? Mm -hmm. And right now, I felt like my time would be better spent play testing. Um, me not having 1500 ELO was a choice that I made. Oh wow. Okay, so you say if if you wanted to, you could grind that out no problem. You feel completely comfortable in your skill. It's not a matter of a number. It's more about okay, I need to just no. go out play them. But I could show I could try and play test and I could show up to Paris with a 1001 ELO. And to me that that wouldn't change anything. If anyone feels that if they looked at me lesser because I had a 1001 ELO, that would also work to my advantage as well. So Nice. You feel like going in with the lower elo might be good because you want to play that kind of role of the underdog and and almost like they're going to overlook me because, oh, I'm nothing. I'm just a thousand elo. They're not, you know, we're not going to worry about him kind of thing. Possibly, yes. Gotcha. Um, but like I said, my t I felt like my time was better spent playtesting decks. Um, I wasn't playing decks, tier one decks. I was playing decks to beat the tier one decks, and those are different. And you're not going to get to 1,500 elo what, by playing my modified Demiria lock deck. That's not a 1500 low deck. Right, okay, gotcha, for sure. Um, so as we're seeing actually in this game, um, looking at the cards you have in your hand with this Demiria deck, and, and we're most likely going to have to you know, go a little bit more in depth in, in this as the games go on, because uh, as everyone will see, this first game doesn't exactly go your way right off the bat. Um, but I see you've got a little bit of the more uh, the fat creatures, almost like a, a fatties Demiria deck. You've got your Abyssal Lord in there. I see your Hellfire Maniac in your hand. Um, what was the general strategy on this deck when you were putting it together, um, especially knowing what kind of Sandalfin player Crixius is? Give me your uh, your strategy going into this. Well, my strategy was to, just to find a deck that beat Sandalfin. Um, this deck had a very good win rate. Um, he actually changed his deck quite a bit from that day before. Um, when I went through it with the Fortune um, Amnesia Halls of Amnesia, I noticed that he took out a lot of spells, and then he put in the uh, Angels, and he put in the uh, Wind Gusts, mm -hmm. and that's what really. 
I think it made his deck better against mine, but I still don't think it was enough. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, because you're going to Paris, which is pretty sweet. Um, it also kind of felt like Demiria was a great choice against Sandalfin, uh, and I want to know if you did this purposely, because, you know, that ability that Demiria has, being able to spend six resources, look in his hand, figure out what he's trying to do, and then throw away either some spells, some fortunes. Um, was this just purposeful? You wanted to go in ready to beat him? Did you have any doubt in your mind? Did you think he was going to switch Sandalfin? Um, what were your, I guess, like feelings towards what Crixius was going to do strategy-wise? Well, it was it was a big relief for me to see that he was playing Sandalfin. Um, like I said earlier, the first day for the semifinals, I played a deck right. that had a poor matchup against Sandalfin, but a good matchup against Syria. And I feel he beat me and then I feel that that might have helped his decision to keep Sandolphin, and then the next day I pick my deck that really counters Sandolphin, and that was what I my strategy going into this. Okay, so hold on, I I, I want to point this out for everyone in the chat so that I I, I want to make sure I got this right. So you purposely played a different deck to lose to Crixius on the first day, so that he would get overconfident with Sandolphin, and then switched because you felt like you could do better with a different deck against him. I didn't purposely lose against him, but I played a deck that didn't have the best matchup against him. That's that's pretty smart. I mean, just kind of putting that strategy out there, seeing what he's going to do, feeling him out, and then revealing your hand after the fact. That's good. That's good to adapt. That's really that's really smart. And he he two owed every single person that day, I believe. Um, why wouldn't he continue the same? Why wouldn't he keep playing Sandolphin? So I took a risk by playing this deck. Because this is the deck that I felt beat Sandolphin about 80% 80, 80 of the time. Right. Um, and from the looks on the replay, I mean, neither person's actually got any damage, although he's just about to smack you in the face for about 7 damage. Um, right. This right here, this first game, um, what was the problem with getting going in this game? I mean, to me it looked like you just had a pretty shoddy starting hand for you know, his almost like rush capabilities. Sandelfin's so strong early game. Um, was it just a bad hand for you that you couldn't get going here in the first game? Uh, well, it was just, it's a mix. I didn't have any cheap creatures. Mm -hmm. I mean, I run about 16 two-cost creatures in the deck, and how many have we seen? Two of them. Right. Um, and then he plays the Monsoon, and to me it's a rush. I'm rushing against the Monsoon, mm -hmm. um, trying to wipe his creatures before he can play it. Right, and he 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 ended up getting a lot of creatures out and a strength this sea and a monsoon, and once he starts stacking spells like that, then th that that's a lot of problems for me. That's a lot of hard disadvantage. Yeah, you're almost lucky that you had uh, the forbidden flame there, like we just saw. Um, well, I tutored. I believe I tutored for that. Yeah, I mean, if you, you that was your first tutor, and then you got the might of nature in the hand right afterwards, uh, but the might of nature wasn't even that helpful from what I've seen so far, um, just simply because you didn't have the creatures to put out on the field. If you don't have anything to take half damage, instead you're just taking the damage all straight to your hero. Not going to exactly work the best. Um, but this was a move right here that Crixius did that kind of made me a little bit interested, because you played this perfectly. Um, he uses Ice Splinters without any creatures out on the field, which to me... It's like, okay, he probably has Song of the Lost in his hand, and he's just setting something up for later on. You used your ability immediately, and it took you a second to think about what you were going to use it on. Um, but discarded Song of the Lost. Um, was that just a, hey, he threw Ice Splinters out. i got to see if he has Song of the Lost. Let me get rid of it. Well, and I, I knew I hauled, him, I hauled up an amnesia to him earlier, so I knew he had Song of the Lost the entire time. Oh, wow, okay. I forgot about that. That's awesome. So um, it, it was just... Let me get rid of that, get it out of the way. I don't want to, if I get my creatures out, have the wombo combo potential out on the board. I was just looking at his hand. I mean, the Angels knew, that Revised Tactics knew. That wasn't in his deck the day before. Mm -hmm. And so basically that time, I knew exactly what I was going for when I demuriated him. There was no other spell in the game he could have that I would want. But what I wanted to do is look at his hand and see how his deck had changed. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. And then here's those angels like we were talking about. And it looks like, he, from strategy-wise, that he just kind of wanted to hide behind the ice splinters, uh, put them out, and then make it so that it was harder for you to combat his creatures. 
um, especially with the double monsoon play that he just put out the second monsoon so all of his creatures well, taking so much less damage from the earth spells uh, what were your thoughts well, zero about damage yeah. now, well now I have two zero I have two dead cards in my hand and that's that's kind of a thing that if we watch you'll see is every time he plays a monsoon that those are more dead cards in my hand mm -hmm. and that's just card advantage for him yeah for sure because any earth spells basically that you're pulling at that point it's gonna be really hard to wipe his board when you've already used your forbidden flame um, right. and the insect swarm the firebolt gonna be pretty much useless um, it's just uh, this first game the the card pulls were kinda not going your way at all well, I, don't, I don't have any creatures to take half damage with my uh, bite of nature so mm -hmm. yeah. and now I'm gonna have to get take damage again smacked in the face because I can't I don't have five power and and that was really how this game turned out as I was just a turn behind the entire game and again send a rush deck like send off and you can't be a turn behind you have to be a turn ahead yeah oh I totally agree um, and it's funny because like you see the hellfire maniac and the abyssal lord in your hand and those play such a huge integral role in the coming games like those really fat creatures getting the mind of nature and just him not being able to wipe the board uh, which we'll see in games two games three games four um, which are coming but right now not getting to the point where you have anything out on the board I mean did you at this point in the game think okay this is over I gotta start thinking for game two or are you still trying to scrap this one out I'm trying to scrap this one out I mean I have next turn I have that maniac coming out then I have the pit lord um, but you know this the problem with Sandolphin is until I have a nature's grasp out and every line cleared up with the high toughness creature he can still pull it he can still four with a pale death seeker or six depending on how many weaker mercenaries are up right oh yeah completely um, i'm not i'm not safe until in my opinion his board is almost clear i have full creatures and i have an grasp out right at any point if any of those th three things aren't there he can tr he can pull the game out hmm. yeah and, totally makes sense and that kind of shows the the depth of send Dolphin and why it was a good choice for him and it's a tier one deck yeah, Sandalphin, I mean, especially if you are able to get enough, like, Wolf Captains uh, from your Void Rising packs that you can... Get, it's just a, such a strong deck. I think it's the strongest Haven deck right now. Uh, once the Altar of Wishes comes out, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of people going for those Wolf Captains and making more decks very similar to this. Um, but, nevertheless, it, it's kind of tough to get the cards to make a good Sandalphin deck right now. That Wombo Combo potential is so good. Um, I also want to open this up, by the way, to our chat. I see a lot of people talking about um, the stream itself. If you guys do have questions for Smurf Burn, please do throw them in here. Uh, a lot of people also, I'll take the side note and say about the server maintenance, uh, that is ongoing right now. Uh, hopefully we'll be done soon. Uh, once we do have more word on that, if it finishes up while we're here on the stream, I'll let you guys know so that you guys can open up the game, load and play as well. Uh, but for those that are just tuning in, these are the replays from the North American Live Finals that just happened this past weekend uh, between Smurfburn, who is joining us here on the stream today, and Crixius, who uh, actually was the other uh, finalist that won the Gen Con tournament earlier this year in Indianapolis. So, two very good North American players, um, and... As you can see, this first game, however, not exactly going Smurf Burns' way right now as he's struggling uh, with a 10 life disadvantage to Crixius's Sand Dolphin. So, again, guys, if you do have any questions for Smurf Burn, please let us know and we will let you uh, ask those directly to him. Uh, but, Smurf, at this point in the match, you've got your Hellfire Maniac out. It's in the same row as the Ice Blenders. Um, Crixius is trying to figure out how he's going to get past you and, and file, finally deal those, I guess you could say, 10 last damage final blow. Um, what was your kind of strategy right here trying to come back? That Hellfire Maniac. There's an interesting play coming up in about a minute, too, from when I watched this replay yesterday, uh, where you used the, um, the card to sacrifice the Hellfire Maniac when it had one life. When that play comes up, I really want to know what your thoughts were at that point in the game. 
Well, I guess I'll discuss it now. Um, he has Wind Gust in his deck. Wind Gust in his deck, which means at any point he could geyser a one power, a one toughness creature, mm -hmm. and then Wind Gust another creature up and open up a lane. Mm -hmm. And with seven damage isn't a lot. So if he moved that Lurker up with Wind Gust, he could put a Power Death Seeker in the bottom lane and kill. Him. Gotcha. So my my goal was to not have any one toughness creatures on the board. Okay, it makes sense. That's perfectly. That makes complete sense. And there you see he geysers the top lane and gets in for six. And at this point, I I'm not very comfortable with how this game is. Um, I just couldn't I couldn't recover fast enough and I couldn't stall well enough. Um, I was a little worried. I apologize for did. just uh, giggling there. One of my coworkers just decided it was a good time to roll in his rolly chair past the camera, so. I don't know if anybody even saw it, but it was funny. Here, I apologize. Continue. Um, I totally made you lose your train of thought. I apologize. I do, that's okay. <laughs> I'm trying to figure, think about where I was at. Um, I think at this point, I know I'm lost. I need two big creatures because he can burn down that Hellfire Maniac. Yeah. Just a lightning rift will kill it at this point. Mm -hmm. And... So I have two turns to draw and play two big creatures. One turn, I bought myself a turn with Oak Shield, and now I have one turn to play, draw and play two big creatures and get rid of that Hellfire Maniac. Uh, makes sense. Okay. So we did just have one question come up in the chat um, about uh, Crixius and you. So Crixius, because he finished second in North America, he is going to be playing in the wild card, which means he has a chance still at joining you in Paris. So we've got some incredible players playing in this wild card tournament. It's the 16 players that came just this close to making it to Paris, but fell short. Um, they are all going to be playing each other in two separate Swiss tournaments, and the winner from each tournament will play in a, I believe it's best of nine? It's either best of series or seven or best of nine series, according to the rules. I gotta look that up. I think it's best of nine though, um, to determine who's gonna be that final person to go on to Paris. Do you think Crixius has a shot uh, with all those top European players? I mean, you you just played him. You see how he plays. Um, what do you think is gonna happen there? Um, I think Crixius plays a great game. Um, he's very tight. He definitely shows that. He's played collectible card games before, and we've both offered to help play test with them. I mean, we want to, our goal is for next year is to be, build a stream taunt, a strong Team America, and go to Worlds and force like the Europeans get to um, play test amongst ourselves. And hopefully, maybe next year we could set the meta instead of play testing their meta. Right, yeah, that makes sense. And I think there's going to be a huge opportunity for that with our next expansion, uh, Forgotten Wars, coming out very soon. There's going to be a lot of changes to the way that the game is played. This actually leads me to a question that I had um, that I was really curious on, on your thoughts. Since Forgotten Wars is right around the corner, and there's going to be so many changes to the game uh, before you go to Paris. So we're going to see entire new strategies coming out. How are you going to prepare for all the new capabilities, all the new cards, um, all the new heroes? What is your regiment going to be like in training for the World Championship in Paris later this year? Um, I guess to answer that, my regiment would just have to be playtesting playtesting, um, drawing up new decks. Um, I already have a small team I playtest with. And to be honest, I feel like this is extremely fortunate that we have a new set coming out. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like my strength is analyzing a new meta and then playing before before set decks come in, before the tiered, tiered decks show up, and before everyone really knows what to do. That's my strength. And then the longer the sets are out, the, le the longer the meta stales, then I start doing a little worse and worse and worse. Sure. Um, my, I mean, my dream was that the set gets delayed and it comes out a day before the world worlds, and then with with few spoilers and everyone's looking at 260 new cards at, at the world event. Yeah. So then you just kind of analyze quickly overnight, stay up all night, make sure you don't sleep, <laughs> and find something that you feel is really strong, and good to go. I like it. Gustav, even in chat, who is a very common. Um, 
play around these parts says that you're really confident in your skills. Do you think that that's going to be a problem? Do you feel like maybe overconfidence could be an issue where you go in too confident in your skills and end up getting blown out of the water? It, it, would that be a problem? I mean, I'm going <clears> to <throat> – I come off as confident, but I'm also, also having fun right now. Um, I did, I did playtest a lot. I did a lot of preparation, and I felt confident going into this. And depending on how much – oh, there's Crixius in chat. The more I uh... – the more I play this, the more confident I become. And to be honest, it's hard not to be confident because nobody really knows what's going to happen coming up. So why not be confident, right? When the new set comes out and how everything's going to change and what's going to be popular. Right. It's, it's going to be a huge set. It's going to be huge abilities coming up. And it's probably going to change, it's probably going to change every deck and make some, some extremely competitive decks not competitive and some decks that people wouldn't have given the second thought to playing top tier. So this is exactly what you were talking about before, um, where Lightning Bolt's going to come out, and that's going to take out one of your creatures, Wind Gust, and then Crixius, we see him opening up that bottom lane and taking game one by a, a, actually a pretty convincing play, it seems, um, winning without even taking a point of damage. So this first game is over, and I have to ask, what was your mental state right now because you didn't even get a point of damage on to Crixius in that first game. Um, were you nervous? How did this affect you going into the second game? Um, I was a little a little off tilt, but not much. I still felt like I had a good matchup. Mm -hmm. um, I just knew I had to play it around those new wind gusts that he put in his deck. Um, those were great to put in against me. It gave his deck a lot more staying power with the angels. Um, I think he probably thought I would pick a deck that would try to grind him out. Maybe he thought I was going to play Malik. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we had talked a lot on... We had a hangout last week where we had all four of the North American finalists come on with us here on the stream. If you guys want to check that out, it's on our YouTube. It's also here in the highlights here on Twitch for a little bit longer. But we kind of all talked, and you had mentioned that you really enjoyed playing those uh, Adar Malik decks where you played Atropos and anytime it died, pull it back and just um, comboed over and over, recycled that Atropos. Um, and, and, and we did play test Atropos and he did atrociously. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, against Sandolphin anyway. Um, it's just, he's just not fast enough. Got it. Okay. So, hey, you know, Crixius here in the chat, though, is saying that he felt you would probably play Demiria um, and that she was thinking it was either going to be Fatties or Slowpoke. So that might be why he ended up changing his deck around to include the spells that he did. Now, this is game two that we just loaded up, so we've got this playing on the screen, and this is by far the longest game in the entire series. Uh, so guys, definitely uh, want to grab a drink for this one and uh, sit back, kick your feet up, because you're in for a good one. Um, but with that one game disadvantage, things kind of change. Um, you got to play a little bit differently uh, in a competitive situation uh, simply because if you lose two more, you're gone. I mean, this is the difference between, oh, I have a 1 in 16 chance at the wild card and a guaranteed trip to the world championship. Um, how did this affect your strategy, I guess, going into the second game? You didn't really have the chance to even get off your feet in the first game. Uh, were you thinking anything different with the starting hand? I mean, you actually have your Maniacs, you have the Succubus, you have a Lurker in your hand, so it's a couple one, two resource creatures. Um, were you relieved? G give me your thoughts. Um, I was relieved to get a better starting hand. Um, the way the deck works, I mean, I felt last game was close. I'm not going to get damage in until I win. I mean, I'm not going to try to race damage. Um, sometimes I will to put pressure on him. Uh, as you can see here, I always look, go straight for the deck to see what I can pick. Now I know he has Song of the Lost again in his hand. Right. Um, both epic spells are targets. Gotcha. Um, Nilly Combs in the chat just asked a question that I think is going to ring really true. Um, he wants to know, are there any players that are qualified for Paris so far that you hope not to get matched up with? Um, have you started researching your play, uh, the players that you're going to be playing against in Paris? Um, I haven't. I mean, to be honest, I'm pretty scared of all of them. A lot of them have you know, won the 50 games. 
And I know, I mean, they're all going to be good. They're all going to be on a top level, and I'm really going to have to increase my game to go up there. And But I can't I can't go in there scared to fu fight one person. I have to go in there prepared for everybody. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, there's some really tough competition. Like, for example, Oyao, who won the July online qualifier, he, I mean, he was the 16th seed in July, and he ransacked the entire tournament like absolutely ridiculous play and he didn't mind changing his strategy around either he actually played demiria to win the finals but it was a demiria slowpoke deck um, so let's transition into that strategy right there how do you feel against things like a, a slowpoke or an otk i mean is something like a demiria in the back of your mind so that you can counter those play styles or do you have other things planned um, well, like I said in our four-person interview, I don't like OTK or Slowpoke because it can get countered by the Demiria deck. Mm -hmm. While it doesn't, Demiria doesn't always win, it has a very good win chance against you. Um, and so I just don't... It may be stronger with the new set. Maybe we could see an OTK mill or a Slowpoke mill deck. That's a lot stronger. But for me, I just don't feel like they're resilient enough. Right. Um, someone in chat just asked, what's OTK mean? And everyone's kind of chiming in already, but that stands for one turn kill, where you basically are stalling your opponent, pausing your opponent out, making it so that they are not able to do enough damage to kill you, and then either buffing a creature up to the point where it can kill you in one turn, or using something like a Tower of Oblivion, where it does enough damage to kill you in one turn. So, very different playstyle than the aggro creatures, the fat creatures kind of deck. Um, but it does have counters, like we were just saying, like a Demiria, or even something as simple as, you know, uh, a, a Garant that has a minor recall in his hand and stops you from being able to uh, put out those Ultra Shadows. Um, have you playtested anything like that, where you're possibly going something like a random Garant, which is super popular right now? Um, I haven't really tested Garant. Um, I if I play Inferno, I like to play Demiria. Um, that's just my play style. Even if I'm gonna try to play Demiria Rush deck. Right, I gotcha. So, with the way that this game is going right now, let's get back into this game for a second because we definitely don't want to ignore the play that's going on as well. Um, you got your two lurkers out there. He just used a wind gust to kind of change the way the board uh, was playing a little. But sh instantly, we can see that things are going a little bit better for you uh, because you've actually done seven points of damage to him here in the first six minutes, you know, as opposed to absolutely not even being able to touch him in the first game. Um, we see those two Hellfire Maniacs in your hand, ready to go, but also two monsoons out on the board as well so again your earthquakes your insect swarms absolutely killer to have those cards in your hand when they aren't going to do much at all uh, except take up space in your hand um, at this point were you just trying to get to the maniac so that you could put those out on the board um, or were you thinking about okay I should try going for the throat here I'm going to get another four damage this turn um, Week of the Mercenaries could use six. Give me your thought process again here, uh, especially now seeing that you moved the Lurker up. Well, I play. I have to play around Geyser, um, and while I want, I want him. My goal is not to race. I can't race down Dolphin. He could drop sword, and then he can play two pals, and then I could be at less than ten life in one turn. Um, and right now with. With the two monsoons, I have to worry about card advantage. So, I do want to play my maniacs, but I need to get Might of Nature out first, so I can keep my card. I can keep the machine going and go for the throat, like you said. Um, I just can't start playing big creatures because it's, when he starts whittling those down, they lose so much of their effectiveness. And when I already have two two dead cards in my hand, mm -hmm. in which will probably be more if we see there's one game where I have like four dead cards in my hand, I just can't. I can't afford to lose any more card advantage at this point. Right, yeah, I totally understand. So you are completely okay with taking it slow and kind of taking it to the uh, to the outer limits uh, that you could of this game. I mean, as every every go ahead. Every turn that I survive with less damage was is good for me. That's my goal. Right. So 
I don't care. He can try to rush me all he wants. The longer this game goes, the better chance I have of winning. Yes. Okay, so with that being said then, I mean, it looks to be that you're in a good position. Um, it feels like you kind of wanted to almost not play those spells just so he thinks he might have more potential in your hand. Kind of fake him out almost, um, having that extra card there. Um, but again, Crixie is very almost cautious in his play here. He, he really did seem like he was thinking quite a bit about his play as well, which is good. Um, but also, Crixius, if you're still in chat, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. I wish you could have joined us here today. I had invited Crixius, but he also had work, unfortunately. So I would have loved to have had both of you guys here to chat about this, because I'd like to hear his thoughts about his preparations for the wild card. Um, but nevertheless, uh, guys, I do want to point out again, if you have any questions for Smurfburn, you definitely can put them in chat and I will ask them to him. I do also want to say that after the second game finishes, I am going to throw a raffle in the chat for a code for a pack of free cards. So make sure to stay tuned. I see that we have about 600 viewers at the moment, so thank you so much for everybody that is tuning in. But um, after this game, we're going to do a raffle, which will be awesome. So stay tuned, and you'll have a chance at winning a pack of free cards, which is great. Um, but in I the saw, meantime, I s go ahead. See, I saw a comment up there from uh, the Mighty Kong. It says, why would Smurf feel he is at an advantage for stalling against a stall deck? Well, St. Dolphin is a stall deck. I think Demiria Fatties is more of a stall deck. Um, I feel like the, the longer the game goes, the more steam I get and the less, and the less he gets. Um, once I play a Might of Nature and Abyssal Lord, there's not much St. Dolphin can do. Okay. Um, Gustav just asked another question here, and he said that you felt that you one of your strengths was um, analyzing and adapting to um, you know new cards, new situations, things like that. Um, have you been able to look at many of the new cards from the next expansion? And if so, do you have a favorite faction yet? Um, what are you anticipating what you'll be playing with the new uh, cards that are coming out? Um, well, I probably don't want to play Mill. I think that's going to be an expected strategy. Mm -hmm. But really, I like. There's a couple decks I like. I like the Alia Stall deck too, where you get you start getting your creatures back every turn. There's some fun Haven creatures to start bringing back. Mm -hmm. But really, I mean, and and, and I do want to play a Darmalik. If I could, if I could pull that off and play him, I would be a very very happy. But I also want to play Griffin Battle Priest and see if I can stay at 20 life the entire game. Oh, There's right. a couple strategies I, I want to try out. Neat. Cool. Uh, for those that are wondering, yeah, uh, I know the server's being down for maintenance right now. Um, you can save the code and use it for after. It's not something that'll just expire. It would be something that um, you can use whenever. Uh, looks like we've got another question here from Mr. Jones. It says, as a beginning player who doesn't plan on putting money into the game yet, what is the most cost-efficient way to build your collection and stay competitive? Um, I actually think I want to take that question real quick, if that's okay, um, because I want to um, actually give props to one of our community members by the name of Onclays. Um, which, if you have ever had the chance, he actually streams here on Twitch as well. Go check him out. Onclase is awesome. But he actually just did a challenge um, where he was trying to get the most value out of his cards as possible. Um, and he just put together a guide over on the forums. So go check that out. Uh, he got to 1500 ELO without ever spending any money on a new account. So... Uh, it is definitely possible if you're not looking to spend money into the game yet. If you do, we appreciate it because, hey, that helps us make the game better. But it is possible to do very well if you are skilled, which is awesome. Um, but for what you should do to start, I would recommend looking into uh, one of the boxes to start. Uh, link that, please. Yeah, I can try to get that real quick for you. Um, give me just one second. As that, I've got a ton of things going on all at the same time here. But... I would definitely recommend starting out with one of the regular boxes, grabbing some reinforcement packs. Um, before you go for some of the expansions, get that base set. That's just such a huge way to get started. Uh, oh wow, Mighty Kong, thank you so much. Uh, totally beat me to it. 
greatly appreciate that. Shout out to you. Really appreciate you putting that there in the chat for us. Um, but yeah, if you're just starting out, can't say enough. Um, go check out that Enclase um, blog and he'll help you out there. Uh, Moon Cows has a question for you, Smurfburn. Um, do you think that the new set uh, will change the road to Paris meta enough to give you a significant advantage? Or do you expect strategies to stay kind of persistent? Um, I expect everything to change, um, and like I said earlier, I hope it doesn't settle yet. Um, I tend, to, I feel like when I played competitive Magic the Gathering, I did a lot better when first sets came out. If it was a Grand Prix and a new set had just come out, I would do a lot better than six months down the road when it was more stale, when it was settled, when the meta was settled. Now, at this point in the game, turning back real quick, because we see the Wombo combo coming out from Crixius, right? He's got two Wolf Captains out here on the board, and he just hits you for something that's really painful, right? Yes. You just had your board cleared. He uses Week of the Mercenaries here, so he's going to get another five damage out on you. At this point in the game, are you starting to freak out a little bit? I mean, this game's still going to go on for quite a bit longer, no spoilers, guys. I'm not trying to do that to you. But being such an epic game, at this point, are you worried? I mean, you know that if you go down 2-0 here, the chances of you coming back are pretty darn slim. I mean, losing two games, then coming back three straight is, in a competitive setting, it's just absolutely ridiculously hard to do. Um, um. What was going through your mind when you are getting wombo comboed and you're not exactly sure what to anticipate next um this game i still felt a lot better about than last game i mean i have earth's grasp and oak shield and both of those are such a huge relief um once earth's grasp hits the field my heart usually just settles and that that's my goal is, is to start locking it down i just bought myself a turn i have another maniac in my hand and despite being at six life i'm a lot more comfortable now than i was at 20 life last game all right, so we have a question in the chat actually from Misty Misty. Uh, she says, uh, regardless of your results in the tournament, will you continue to play DOC competitively? And would you consider streaming or making other video content? Um, we have talked about that. We kind of have a, a, two, a good two person team going at Chico. We play tests a lot, uh, myself and Dietrich42. And we are talking about making a joint stream, um, try to get a lot of streaming quality up there. But we both work full time. But I think we're gonna try to make it happen. Nice. I was watching. I was watching Crixus's stream. I'll admit, um, getting ready, kind of scoping out the competition. I saw. I liked. I liked his content, and I liked how he did it. And I thought he did a very good job. And that would be something that I would try to do as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I. I would absolutely love to see that as well. One of the things. Um, being someone that's obviously more on the community side myself, uh, one of the things I'd love to see is some more content, some more almost like podcasts, people talking about the meta, some strategies. Because I think there's a lot of things that are still undiscovered, even in this game right now. Um, but more and more is going to come out as Forgotten Wars comes out, and then uh, whenever our next expansion is after that, you know, it's it's a good time. Um, let's see, we've got another question from Mr. Jones. As a long-time Magic the Gathering player, do you feel a sideboard style of play should be implemented or do you think it'd be better to completely change your decks between rounds and matches? What are your thoughts? Um, I like to change the whole deck. I don't like a sideboard. I don't like the whole sideboard idea. I feel like this game has enough diverse cards. It has hero abilities. You don't have to have mana in your deck. So you just you have a full deck of 51 cards and events. That I don't think that we really need sideboarding to be introduced. I think it would take away from the game. Um, it, would, it would make heroes... That, that had answers to everything, I think, a little more powerful than, than heroes that didn't. Right. And I think it would stay, I think it would stale. I think it would stale the meta if, if, if sideboards were available. Yeah. This part in this game is just, it feels so dirty to see three maniacs out on the board. So, and ice splinters down in that second row as well. It's going to be so hard for Crixius at this point in the game to get any sort of control over the board. Um, was this what you were kind of planning all alone, along to kind of just kind of choke him out with the the maniacs and the ice splinters, or did this just happen as like almost a, a happy occurrence? 
No, this is this is my goal is to get four large toughness creatures out front. And I mean he plays ice splinters late, late game, that's my benefit. Mm -hmm. Because I'm taking one damage from it with my melee creatures. Um I did want the Arbiter lock, but unfortunately I only have one Arbiter. It is in there, but I never draw it when I need it, so <laughs> Right. So, I, and I was curious about that too. I mean, because I saw you throw down the Arbiter in one of the games uh, and, and kind of choke him out there. Um, but that, and that's such a strong, strong playstyle. Seeing something like discarding all their spells uh, with Demiria and then locking them down with an Arbiter so that they can't draw any more cards. For those that don't know, a Void Arbiter is a creature that when it's put out on the field, you can only draw a card at the start of your turn. Any other things, if there's like a celebrations event out, or if you're using your ability to, to spend a resource to draw a card, you will not draw anything if there is a Void Arbiter out on the field. So, very strong. Shame you only have one. That would be a really good addition to this deck. Um, Epic African Toad, Jason's Burf Burn. What do you think is the cause for Sanctuary being so unpopular in play, except the infamous Lockdown decks? Do you want to take this one first? Um... I don't think it's that unpopular. I mean, when I'm playing against some of the 1500 ELO people, I'm seeing some... I'm definitely seeing some Yukiko rush decks. Um, I think it's just that mid-tier where it's that 1000 ELO area. It just gets so ground out by Necro, which is so popular in that, in that range that a lot of people don't feel like playing it. But I think it is competitive. Okay. Um, I think from just my personal... Um, experience that Sanctuary it seems like there may be a couple like two drops that they could be missing like just from what I've seen I think that they're going to be a little bit stronger after the expansion especially um, with some of the new cards I wish I could talk about them this is a good time to plug what we're going to be doing here on Friday actually um, I want you guys to all come back here for our team stream on Friday. If you haven't heard yet, we are going to be doing a little bit of something special where we're going to be previewing and spoiling the new expansion. Uh, we'll have our devs here on the stream. We'll have some top players here on the stream. And we're going to go over quite a bit of the news, uh, what to expect from Forgotten Wars. So that will be this Friday here on our Twitch and that's going to be from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Paris time, which is 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, on the east coast of the United States. So definitely get some time, make some time in your schedule, and come on over here because that's going to be absolutely huge this coming Friday. Um, Soil burn. Jason, a large part of the player community has requested the feature of being able to add the same card to several decks at once. Um, that feature is still being looked at. Um, we should hopefully have more information about that in the future. Uh, nothing set in stone yet. Nothing's been announced. Um, I know that the community has been absolutely rambunctious about getting that in here, and I would love to see it too. It's, uh, it's something I'd like to see personally, uh, but stay tuned for more info. I don't have any other concrete answer there. Uh, let's see, Epic says, since Sanctuary and Stronghold wasn't spoiled at all until now, could you please start the spoiler stream with those factions? <laughs> I can pass that along for you. I don't know if they'll actually listen to me, but, uh, because that's out of my hands. But, um, we'll see if we can do that. Uh, getting back over here to the actual game itself, though, that's going on. Uh, still in that same sort of position, those three Maniacs are just absolutely, well, Maniacs. They've been staying out on the board, um, and just wrecking face um, and this right here moving that maniac down into the row with the ice splinters knowing that both of his units are going to die to that um, is this the part in the game where you're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable and confident because you completely strangled him at this point he's down to two cards you have full card advantage full board advantage uh, is are things starting to ease up in your mind are you starting to get a little bit more comfortable I am um the Maniacs, how they force his guys to attack, it means he can't win Gust 1 away and then attack. Um, that chance is gone at the beginning of the turn. I talked before, I now have four, we're talking about card advantage, I also have four dead cards in my hand that do zero damage to anything on the board. Um, I should say perceived card advantage, because he doesn't know that. <laughs> um, I actually have another question here in the chat uh, for you uh, about the current meta. 
uh, what decks do you prefer right now in the current state of the game? Uh, and are you limited in playing what you like because of lack of cards? Uh, are there any other decks that you prefer? Um, I have some lack of cards. I think I have enough cards to build the decks. Um, I prefer to play Malik Control. Um, I also have a Yukiko Control, the Slowpoke deck. I could probably I like Nur the Nurgle Control deck, and I have a uh, the surprise the Stronghold Surprise decks. But prefer I like to I like to play Necro. That's just I don't know why, but that. That that rings joy to my heart, like we were talking, and it's kind of it's brutal play style. It's very attrition. It's attrition based game, and that's what I like. I like just like the one for one card advantage, and then getting two of your cards back, and then one for one for one card advantage, and getting two of your card back. So basically, just that that really almost like that recursion style of play, which I gotta be honest, it's gonna be a little bit harder to do after the expansion. Um, so we'll have to see how people how that gets affected. And those things haven't exactly again been announced. This is just my way of plugging the Friday stream again. Come check that out. I'm such a tease when it comes to stuff like that. God. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. I'm, I'm actually, I've been playing a lot of um, slow poke recently myself, which some people really dislike. Um, they kind of feel like it's almost like solitaire, but I have to admit, and if you haven't played it, I really think you should, everyone here. Um, I would try out a deck like that because there's actually a lot more weakness to it than what you would anticipate. And once you've played it, you can see it. I actually play better against Slowpoke decks now, having that experience of running it. So if you get the chance, I'd recommend, just as Smurf was saying, you know, try it out and see what you can uh, do. You'll learn a lot more about the game. Uh, Cottonman's asking, what is Mill? Mill is a strategy that basically makes your opponent run through all their decks, uh, all their, all their cards, all their... Um, their entire deck just basically trying to deck them, make them have zero cards, give them no options. So, <laughs> and I'm being yelled at for advertising slowpoke decks. I'm serious, guys. If you play them, you'll do better against them. Try them out because you'll recognize the weaknesses. If you ever don't understand how to beat something, try playing it. You'll instantly see the strengths and weaknesses of it. And, and when you do play a slowpoke deck, I'll add, I felt like every turn I was going to lose, and I just barely drew the card I needed. Um, and I think a lot of players, it, it's not as locked down as people think it is. And like you said, you're playing Nurgle. I feel like every every game I win, I just barely drew the card I needed in time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and some people are insistent about, you know, uh, it's it's basically knowing, especially if you're playing something like a Nurgle Slowpoke, right? Um, uh, Rickzard asks, asking, what is slow poke? It's almost a way of protecting yourself while slowly poking the opponent down. For example, Nurgle slow poke uh, will use things like uh, earth shields uh, or stone shields where you can't take damage for a turn um, or alter shadows to make it so that no creature can attack. Um, if you have something like a, a minor recall, if you have primal, if you're using a champion that has prime magic, primal magic, one minor recall will absolutely destroy you it's you've got to be so careful knowing when to play what spell you're playing when to play what fortune you're playing and getting those right if you're able to tutor the cards you need if you're able to um, get the protection right it's it's a little bit tougher than what people understand and no this is actually water man it's not vodka come on why would I do that on the duel of champion stream come on pen on um, but nevertheless, getting out of stronghold, uh, I said stronghold instead of slowpoke, getting out of slowpoke, we still have this game going on. This has been almost a half hour long game at this point. Like I was saying, this is absolutely ridiculous for game two. Uh, by far the most, um, I guess you could say in-depth game in the series. Um, and... Uh, Go ahead. At this point, I wasn't sure if I was going to be dealing damage to him or if I would, he was just going to draw out of cards. Um, the game went on that long. Mm -hmm. So, at this point, it's got to be maybe, what, 10, 15 cards left in the deck? Very low. You do have your Forbidden Flame, so if things... Well, th there we go. As I say that, you end up using that, wiping the board, except for your Lilums. Um... Uh, 
which is a really good advantage now for you because he only has one card in his hand. Uh, this is getting to the point now where just one mistake on his part and you'll be able to secure the victory. And little, I'm, I'm sure he does know that I have five dead card, six dead cards in my hand. My entire hand is dead. Um, six zero damage spells and an Earth's Grasp that's already in play. But I do have the pressure. He has to start. He can't, he can't put pressure on me now. One of those Lilims, if another week of the Mercenary pops up, one Lilim can kill him next turn. Mm -hmm. So, again, like, at this point, just kind of waiting it out. He gets some great draws, has the creatures out, but you still have the capability of, even if he can do a little bit of damage, you have that stone shield that's still just sitting there protecting your Demiria as well. So, pulling that bloater, I think, was another really awesome pull for you. Um, just because you have the capability now of pulling some some cheeky moves with that. Uh, you're going to be able to do damage with the Lilums, you know, and those creatures are not going to be able to take down the Lilums. Using and then I have that Lurker. I have that Lurker sitting, which made me feel very comfortable. That that was an MVP. And one strategy I wanted against Crixus was almost just trying to get four Lurkers out with Magic Shield. That would have been... <laughs> Oh wow, that would be that's pretty dirty. That would be he would I don't think his deck would have a single way to deal with that. Um but that would be too slow and it would be primal magic. Demaria was the hero I wanted. Right. And throwing that lurker down on the field right now it's almost to the point where it's GG. There's not really too many cards that Crixius can pull at this point in his deck that could save him from this situation. We know he's already used the Wombo Combo earlier in this. We know for a fact that, you know, he's not going to be able to do as much with something like a Geyser because you do have that Might of Nature out there for the Lurker. Um, <laughs> my... and that, but that's what this deck builds to. It just builds to an, an, an unchangeable endgame. Right. And, that, and, and that's why I said I want to stall. He's a stall deck, but I'm a better stall deck. Right. Got it. Okay. So coming down to the wire here. And guys, I see a lot more people tuning in, just so you know. Again, we will be doing a raffle for a pack of cards after this. And you know what? Depending, I mean, we've got almost 800 people here in the chat, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> I saw that. See, Nilly Combs, that was for you. That was for you. Just because you said she can only wave once. Done. Uh, if we can get over a thousand, I'll do two more raffles as well. So that would be kind of cool. Let's at least keep this going. Uh, we've got two more games still to watch through um, here from the NA Live Finals. We want to definitely give you guys the opportunity to see these awesome games that Smurfburn was a part of this past week. Um, but after this game, we will be raffling off some free cards, which is awesome. So if you guys haven't had the chance to see one of the raffles that I run here before, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, that's coming in about probably the next ooh, five minutes or so. So stay tuned. Um, now, here is something that... I saw when I was watching this replay the first time that kind of made me a little bit nervous was that Doombringer. I was thinking to myself, oh god, is there anything possible that if he puts this Doombringer, and I was scared, I was like, oh god, if he's going to play this Doombringer, what if he pulls something? I couldn't imagine what he could have in his hand, but if he pulls something to kill that Doombringer and wipe the board, I got nervous. Um, well, I did see that he took the lightning bolts out of his deck. Um, when he changed it, and that, that made me a lot less nervous. Um, he can only do two damage to it per spell. And I knew at this point, he, I think he had two powers in his hand. Um, he couldn't draw. If he drew damage, his be two best damage spells, he still wouldn't be able to kill it at this point. Mm -hmm. So, that was, that. I mean, I don't know what it is. I know that he didn't have anything, right? And I'm, I'm kind of going to the next turn already, because I, I know that you're going to be placing down the Doombringer, right? Um... Well, and, and there's the day of tomorrow out there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that card really worked to my advantage as well. There we see the two pals. Um, 
their Doombringer the day of tomorrow. I just wanted to put the pressure on the board and just try to end this game. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming you mean like Day of the Sanctuary so that that way he couldn't target you at all. Um, right. Yep, okay. So at this point now, it's pretty much a game over. There's absolutely no way he's going to be able to prevent all the damn... Why are you reeling her away? There's some crazy things happening in my uh, in my office right now. I apologize. It's really tough to stream and do interviews when you have people being wheeled by your desk. Um, Looks like it's a party over there. I'm kind of jealous. It is. If you ever find yourself in the area for, you know, we'll, we'll take you to the Ubisoft office. We'll, we'll show you around. It'll be good times. Um, Crixie is trying his best to salvage this game using the revised tactics. Um, guys, the raffle isn't open just yet, so d don't worry. It, it, uh, it'll be up on the screen. I'll explain everything. So... No need to put anything in just yet. Things are about to go crazy in here, Smurf. You don't even understand. People, I don't. Maybe people love. Maybe this that moment. is Sir Rock. I don't know. It's it's it's. I love this. I love this admission right here of defeat using the throw the two pals throwing them down. Dude, people are going crazy in this chat. What people? <laughs> I am telling them to stop. All right. So second game. After 34 minutes of play, Smurf, you even things up one to one. That was absolutely mm. insane. Did th was that a sigh of relief? Was that like? It, it was. Um, I was a little worried that maybe his deck changes could uh, would have countered my deck, but mm -hmm. after seeing that, I had an okay starting hand. I had all those dead cards in my hand, and I was still able to pull it out. I felt. I felt very confident going into game three and four. Right, awesome. and I can I can I can post my deck up in a bit. Um, I'll throw it up on MMDOC. That's awesome. Okay, so a lot of people are getting pretty anxious, pretty rambunctious about this. So what I'm going to do is open a new raffle. So the way this works is, whoop, if I can actually get all this out of the way, is there is the instructions on the screen right now. If I can get those out of the way, there we go. So, as Smurf Burns' name is still stretched across the screen, and I've got crazy text and stuff all over the place because I wasn't anticipating doing this, but I gotta make sure you guys are happy, man. I gotta get you guys taken care of. All right, so let's get you guys a chance to win some cards. Type exclamation point raffle in chat to enter. You must be following our channel to win. If you are not following us, this happened three times last week where I picked someone to win and then they couldn't even win because they weren't following us. That was super depressing. We can't let that happen. So I'm going to draw a winner after this and whoever wins gets free cards. Free cards are awesome. So I'm going to give you guys another two minutes or so, probably a little less than that actually, probably a little bit more like, probably more like 30 seconds. Hey, we got to make sure everyone enters. There's a lot of people in here, man. Misty over here says she's going to win. You guys going to let her win? I don't think you need to let her win. One of my support guys over here, Ben, says he's going to win. Are you going to let him win? You don't need to let him win. Everybody, just throw exclamation point raffle and... As I was saying, if you have not, follow the channel. Because it tells me if you're following. You can't, you can't lie about this stuff. It comes up in big red letters of shame. It makes your soul hurt. So, okay. We... <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Appreciate that. Okay, I am going to draw this on the count of three. I need a drum roll. Misty, can you give me a drum roll? Can you come over here and give me a drum roll? Can you, can you come over and give me a drum roll? Everybody, Misty Misty, Spartacus Legends Community Manager from Ubisoft. Say hi. Okay, can drum roll? Okay. I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's pretty cool. Okay, there we go. And draw. Let's see, who are we going to pick? Hollander, following Duel of Champions. Congratulations, you are going to win. 
a pack of cards. Thank you. Appreciate that. High five. Welcome. Teamwork. <laughs> Teamwork. Yeah. Dream team. Uh, my Nerf gun's in the way. I'm, uh, I apologize. All right, so Hollander, thank you so much for following us and for joining the raffle. Definitely do appreciate that. I'm going to add you on here so that we know that you are winning a free pack of cards after this is all said and done. <laughs> We're going to do another raffle probably after the next game. So... I definitely want to get back to this, though, because we still have two more games we have to go through, and we only have an hour left. We only have an hour left on this stream, and we've got tons more content to go through, so we need to get to it. So, grats to our winner, Hollander, and I am closing off this raffle. Stay tuned. We'll do another one after the third game, and we'll do a third final go-home awesomeness after the final game has been completed. But... Do you see? That was pretty crazy, right, Smurf? That was that was pretty intense. Um, it, that was a lot of raffles popped up. I can't. I couldn't keep track. See, that's that's what I think is just a lot of fun. Getting people involved, having a good time. It's uh, it's lots of fun. So we are going to load up the third game in this series. Let me pull that over. And now with things all evened up, one two one. Let's whoop, pull this back up here on the stream. There we go. Going into a very important, pivotal game three. Whoever wins a third game in this best of five series, I mean, going up 2-1, that's, that's a, just an inch closer. So close to winning, securing that trip to Paris. Uh, I think game threes are just so completely pivotal in, in a series like this where it's tied. There's a lot of momentum on the line. There's the potential mental anguish to put yourself under if you are losing um, one more uh, one more game. Um, so game three, absolutely huge. Crixis even said it um, here in the chat as well. Um, will there be any free redeem codes? I don't have any new global codes today, so hope that. Uh, Hope that doesn't turn you away from staying by and keeping track with these awesome games that we're watching. Uh, but we will be doing some more raffles, so definitely stay tuned for those. Uh, Smurf, this hand. Uh, someone actually said, you know, what a hand in the chat. Um, got a really great starting hand here. Um, I'm assuming this made you feel pretty darn comfortable. I was I was pretty happy. Um, the last hand was kind of hard to throw away. It had both epic spells. It had a lurker in it, but... I just I need those cheap creatures to stall. That's what they're there for. Um, I got the Howls of Amnesia so I could pull the Wombo combo out from his hand. Um, as long as that Song of the Lost is there, I can lose the game. The game can be over that fast with his deck. Mm -hmm. So you just basically are trying to take all those potential advantages that he has away and kind of stall out again. Um, someone in the chat just asked about spectator mode. Now, this is something that is being worked on. Uh, we have not been um, able to complete it just yet, but so everybody knows, we are working on a spectator mode for this game. Uh, and once that comes out, I think that's going to be a huge uh, piece of awesomeness for us. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. I, I can't wait for it. That is probably going to be the single biggest addition we can put into the game feature-wise, I think, right now um, for competitive play. So, that's just my two cents. I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I personally think for a competitive game, a spectator mode is something you absolutely need. I can't wait for it to be done. Um, someone's asking about trade system. I think the Ultra Wishes is going to fix everything. I don't think we're going to need trade after Ultra Wishes comes out. Um, I've been able to play with it a little bit. Just wait and see with the new expansion when you when you play with the ultra wishes i think you'll be completely taken care of it'll be good uh actual release date on altar that'll be with the expansion which i think you'll find out a little bit more friday so tune in then um we just saw you use the hall of amnesia and throw away that song of the lost like we were anticipating um kind of taking away some of that um board clear potential that Crixius has with his Sand Elfin, and already, just like that second game, 
putting quite a bit of hurt on him. While we were trying to stall the game out, you still were able to take him down six life already this early. Um, just a little bit, I guess you could say, of uh, an added bonus. It makes it a little bit easier down the line. Well, right? if I can put if I can put pressure on him now, then he's it's going to change the way he places his creatures. It's going to change his place to where it's a less offensive and more defensive, and then that works well for me as well. So if I can put if I get the chance to put pressure on early game, then I always will. Right, right. Um, but now it looks like also he's kind of filled the board up a little, uh, seeing that he has the extra creatures on there, knowing that you only have things that you can play next turn, like um, a couple low cost spells or maybe your succubus and the maniac. Um, going into this next turn, um, and also seeing him move that glory up. Um, did that kind of surprise you, seeing the, the two glories in that one row, that really well, strong row from him? Well, he needs to move it away from the lurker. Mm -hmm. um, that's why he moved it up. He can't, he can't have his glory sitting in front of a creature he can't attack. The you know, thing that worried me is I thought maybe he was sitting on a lightning bolt. Um, lightning, lightning bolt. And he was going to go ahead and bolt the lurker and attack in, but that, that's just a chance I was going to have to take at that point. Right, yeah, it totally makes sense. It was a calculated risk, really. Um, you don't have things in your hand that could really help out, like a, a bloater or something like that right now, because uh, you have those two event cards down there that could have been used to to, to nuke something, for example. Um, right. But nevertheless, that option isn't present. So kind of just moving things around. Now, taking that lurker, moving it up, like you were saying, I, I think that was a smart move. I mean, it could have been a bit of a pain if he had the spell but I mean again we'll see how that plays out um, people in the chat I uh, saw a couple other questions let me scroll back up uh, someone was asking if there will be more types of tournaments I think there will be more features added into the game in the future uh, we haven't announced any new modes just yet I think we're more concerned with getting some of the uh, the biggest things that people have asked for, like Ultra Wishes out at the moment. Uh, if you haven't had the chance to check that out, that's going to be a feature in the new expansion that allows you to get one card that you need, um, where you'll be able to earn what are called wild cards from purchasing packs um, for seals, or you'll have a chance to earn wild cards from gold as well. Um, wow, are you really plotting against me right now? My fellow community manager is plotting against me. I am. I'm being plotted against Susie. About an hour. <laughs> um, but <sighs> nevertheless, um, wild cards. You'll be able to get those in packs and be able to trade them to an NPC who will in return give you the cards that you are looking for. So, And you'll be able to, as soon as you get the amount of wild cards, to turn them in for the epics that you want. Uh, each card will have a different amount of of different uh, cost, so it all depends on what you're looking for. But I think that'll be awesome. It'll be awesome. Thank you so much to everybody that's tuning in. Ultimate Loser just said we got some superstars in the chat. I completely agree. We got some amazing players up in here. Shoutouts to everybody that is tuning in, joining us. Um, and hey, we're here with another superstar here from NA, right? We've got uh, Smurfburn joining us, going over all the games from this past week for the NA Live Finals. So again, Smurfburn, it's su super early over on the West Coast, so appreciate you. Oh, well, at least super early for someone in the game industry, right? Like, I, I man, waking up before 10 is, is killer for me, man. But <laughs> uh, nevertheless, we see four Radiant Glories out here on the battlefield, like in this beautiful little square formation. Um, that's a lot of potential hurt. Um, is this something where, I mean, the, with the cards you have in your hand, where you're like, okay, I got a tutor the Forbidden Flame out right now? Was was that the goal? That was the goal. Um, to be honest, it's a relief seeing all four of those out at once because that means I'm going to hit all four of them right. with the Forbidden Flame. Um, mm -hmm. I know that he could he could go ahead and burn my guys down and do damage now, but I'm feeling comfortable that, that I'm going to be able to slow this game down enough to take control. Yeah, because you know that you're going to be able to wipe out all of his radiant glory. That was a horrible pun. Um, <laughs> that was absolutely bad. But no, he's not going to have any more of those radiant glories uh, if you do nuke out with a Forbidden Flame. So it's almost kind of just like baiting him in to 
feel comfortable. Maybe you put some more creatures out on the board and then smack them all down all at the same time. Uh, but at the same time, he's got to know that's coming too, right? He has... Well, he saw, the, he saw the tutor. He knows. Right. Exactly. But what, what can he do? He has to try to rush damage. Um, at this point, he knows exactly when I'm playing. He knows exactly what's in my deck. Mm -hmm. And he just has to go for the speed. Right. Uh, a couple of things for people in chat right now, Hollander. Um, the code from that you won from the raffle, that'll be after the stream is over. I will send that out. So we've got about 40 minutes left on the stream. We've got one more replay after this game as well, and then we're going to be kind of finishing things up. So that'll be coming after. Uh, and for those that are still asking about the maintenance, uh, that was actually something to help out with our servers. So Fingers crossed that will be done soon. I do appreciate everybody tuning in and, and joining us today while that is ongoing. Um, but especially with my coworkers here trolling me, it's really good too because I actually have my boss here from California standing right next to me, and we have, still have my coworkers trolling me while I'm here on stream with you guys. Eric, could you come over and say hi to everybody real quick? If you ever want to know who one of the, the guys, right? Yeah, so Eric, that's actually one of my bosses. If you ever have any complaints about me, that's the guy you want to go to. There you go. Um, but yes, I I will not share your email address. I don't want to do that to you. Uh, <laughs> but hey, the game launcher is displaying server info. That's a sign of the good direction. But um, nevertheless, guys, um, we're just here having fun with you guys. We want to make sure that you guys are enjoying yourselves while waiting for the servers to come back up, and that's. Aww. Aww. Someone says I'm doing a great job, Mr. Boss. Yay. I'm going to pay you. I'm going to give you free cards later. Um, aww. I'm going to cry here. You guys are. You, you guys are so sweet. There's the heart. Smurf, you're doing a good job listening to us ramble. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> you see, you got up early just for this. Like, that's insane. Um,. But again, like this feels like a complete flip flop around from the first game. Looking at you guys, um, like and how this is playing, because in the first game you were down ten health points about this point in the game too, right? Like, how did this happen? Like again, was it just that bad hand in the first game, and now you feel like the strength of your deck is showing? Um, Absolutely. Um, I feel like this is how our, this this game and the last game are how. Our test matches went when we were when we were play testing. This is how the games went. They were dragged out, they were ground out. A lot of games I won with sixteen to twenty life range. Um, mm -hmm. So and um, but we didn't we didn't play test with Crixus having wind gusts. Um, and that it, it was the right play for Crixus. He did he won the first game with it. Mm -hmm. So now this is you and your buddy Dietrich that were testing together, correct? Yes, uh, Dietrich forty two, and also. Um, Give a shout. I know Nella Combs is in chat. We, he bounced a lot of ideas off of Nella Combs as well. Yeah, Nilly is just an absolutely awesome player. Um, I wish we could see Nilly do a little bit more streaming as well because he's another, I think, pillar of our community. So shout out to Nilly Combs, who is actually in the August playoffs right now fighting for a shot at going to Paris. Who knows? He might actually be joining you soon. So we'll see. Nilly uh, is actually, I think, still in the chat. So shout out to Nilly. Awesome person. Um, mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit more about your friend Dietrich, because um, and actually I did just see the question that uh, Ternega just posted in chat, and I'm going to ask that in just a second. Um, but I want to know a little bit more about your friend that you played touches with. What was the qualifications? How did he help you out? Uh, is he another player at your caliber? Um, he has a. I am one of the most unlucky person at pulling cards I've ever seen. Um, he has an extremely good card pool. I believe he's one of the first North American North Americans to uh, hit the 1500 ELO, mm -hmm. and he was just a great resource for me to play testing. Um, mm -hmm. We were friends before we we started playing this game together, mm -hmm. and um, so we we pretty much we're about the same level. We've had about the same play time, and we live in the same city so we were playing we play together almost every day that's awesome that's really cool and uh wasn't he your finals opponent at kubla he was um we actually went to kubla cons together um we prepared for the tournament together and we actually hmm. play tested against each other before kubla con and so it was kind of like when we had to play each other we already knew what was going to happen 
Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. I do want to get to Ternega's question because he actually had a really good question. Um, Smurf, do you think that going first or second is balanced? So is it balanced for whoever goes first, whoever goes second? Do you think there's an inherent advantage to one? Um, I don't. I think I like to go um, – it just it depends because if I'm going first, I get to put the 2-2 two -two on the board and then I get to attack. Oh, that forbidden then, uh, flame. Oh, that's it, such – that was so pretty, just nuking that all down. Sorry. It was brutal. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, I, I think it's, it's totally balanced. Um, like I said, being able to put that one drop down, there's so many one drops in this game that you can really put pressure from the first turn and then you can, you can set the game state. And while the person that goes second can draw more cards and play bigger things, they're still trying to catch up. Right. Um, I, I don't know if we would ever, we're ever going to see like a coin flip and the person that wins decides to go first or second or if it's always going to be that randomness. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to see a lot more features added to the game. As, I mean... The sky's the limit. I mean, to be fair, this game's only been out for about a year, right? And I think we've come a long way in that point as well with our next expansion on the horizon. And this is one of the times when I think uh, we really need the community's input as well because the community we have is very vocal, and we love that. I mean, the feedback is absolutely crucial uh, to making the game as absolutely breathtaking as possible. So... This is a call to everybody that wants to see something in the game. Please continue to share your feedback on the forums, um, on social media. Um, one of the things that I really would like to see us get a little bit more into is getting some Duel of Champions players on uh, like Twitter. Um, our Twitter, I think, has around 2,000 followers right now. I'd love to get more so we could interact with you guys there um, and talk about uh, the features that you want to see added into the game because, trust me, the devs are listening. Um, I have a good feeling that quite a few of them are watching even right now as we are talking. So we appreciate it. If you have something you want to say, if you want if something you want to hear, let us know. Um, and Rob, I see what you're saying there, like the, like the combos, things like that, or, or a lot of people feeling like a... A tropos might be a little bit OP, but I promise a lot of this is going to be addressed in the expansion. A lot of this is going to be addressed. So, again, check out the stream on Friday. The spoiler stream is going to be absolutely huge. We are absolutely thrilled about the things that are be going to be coming. I like the combo that you just played right there. Putting down the bloater and then using the insect swarm. Um wiping the board again, you're really just stalling him out and getting that might up, you're going to be able to play those Abyssal Lords soon. Right, that's that's coming up next turn, the Abyssal Lords into the uh, Void Arbiter, and that, I mean, this game to me feels like it's a lock, I feel pretty comfortable. Um, he can still put out a lot of damage, but being at 20 life makes me feel pretty well. Yeah, I mean... Makes you feel very comfortable. That 10 point lead actually really is an, a, a huge advantage right now. Um... Although, hey, he's going to finally get some um, fits, get some damage off onto you with that pal. Um, I feel like he's saying, oh, I've got to use these before those Earth's Grasps come out, right? Um, Absolutely. Because he doesn't have a way to kind of take that away. Those pals become dead cards. So, uh, again, you got that first Abyssal Lord out, and this is where those fatties really start coming into play. If you can pull that Might of Nature soon, anything like that, it becomes even stronger. We know he doesn't have the Wombo combo. You used the Hollows uh, of Amnesia earlier in the match to take out that Song of the Lost. And he's going to be struggling with these huge 9 health creatures. Um, again, mm -hmm. the deck is being executed very well right now. And it, it looks pretty comfortable at this point as he's struggling to pull cards and, and find the answer these giant creatures uh, and knowing that you have that second Abyssal Lord and then being able to lock them down with that Void Arbiter that one single Void Arbiter that you have uh, <laughs> it's it's looking like this game is all but just needing to be finished at this point right um, right um, did you have any concerns I, right I here? I still I'm always nervous when I don't have Earth's Grasp out because he can always he can put throw someone in front of the Abyssal Lord and he can place uh, sort of the seas and then start playing pows and da put stack damage up on the board um, I just don't I don't feel relaxed until I get the earth's grasp out and I didn't have it out this game right so 
yeah, I mean, I, it totally makes sense. And, I mean, you still have your Demaria ability, so if need be, you could possibly look into his hand. But the thing is, you still have such fat creatures that it's it's kind of the choice of, do I want to play this creature yet, or do I want to use the ability? You're not to the point late game enough where you can do both. Right. So, I mean, if we got up to, like, turn 13 at that point, being able to play an Abyssal Lord and use the ability at the same time, that's getting pretty hectic at that point. But, um, let's see. I think I saw another question in the chat, or did it, was it just people asking questions to one another? In the near future, will there be a possibility to dispel some spells like Mind Control or things similar? I mean, in the way, you can kind of do something similar now if you use something like a Town Portal, where it returns the creature to the owner's hand. So that is something that kind of, it's almost, it works like a dispel. Um, but I don't know, we'll see some new cards coming very soon. Um, every time someone asks a question like this, I feel like I'm just going to have to say Friday. That's, is that, is that too teasy of me, Smurf? To be honest, you look torn. You look like you just want to talk about it so bad. I do. I do. I want to. It's it's horrible because, uh, and this is going to be a time where I'm going to shout out another fan site of ours, mmdoc.net. Uh, a really great chat room over there. Um, I see 800 people here. We normally have about, what, 50, 60 people over in the chat room. You guys need to go mm -hmm. check out mmdoc.net because all the top players hang out over there, and we have some really great chats. Um and I like to tease them there quite a bit, too. And I'm always so conflicted, because I want to talk about the new features. But they're coming. We can't talk about them yet. But Friday. Oh, Friday. Friday we'll have a good stream. That's going to be a lot of fun time. That's going to be a lot of fun times. It'll be good. Uh, we're getting close to the end of this game. I mean, I can feel it, because you've got these two Abyssal Lords out. That's 10 damage right there. All you need right. to do is get rid of that Griffin, mm -hmm. and it's over. That's 10 damage on the field. Well, with the, uh, with the Wombo combo gone, I mean, this game has been over. Now it's just it's just finishing it. That's how I felt at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I have the Oak Shield in my hand. I have the, the Void Arbiter. I feel very comfortable. I feel like I have all the tools I need. He still doesn't have a Monsoon out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a huge difference from the last game. And it's not like you even were able to use the Tamiri ability and, and throw those away. It's just he hasn't been able to pull them out right. so he has two of them he had two of them in his deck mm -hmm. and and it was it's a race it's a race if i can clear that board before he can find a monsoon that's how i feel like a lot of the games came down to hey someone in the chat's even saying very nice deck seriously you're a good player so i mean you're gonna you have a lot of burden here on your shoulders because you have a chance to prove that the north american players aren't bad Right? right? A lot of, I mean, there has been a lot of trash talk from the European side of things that American players don't have what it takes compared to the Europeans to go the distance, right? We've seen people say, you know what, with Road to Paris, uh, we're not going to see the best players in the finals because of the way the system's set up. But you're doing a lot of good to try to prove them wrong. Um, is that something... Oh my god, using the Demiri ability, he just sniped three geysers out of his hand. He was mm -hmm. trying so hard to find a way to clear those Abyssal Lords off the map. He could have at least killed one using all three geysers, right? Uh, right? Or if he got the Wind Gust and he moved one up, killed both at the same time, and now you've locked him down with the Void Arbiter. Mm -hmm. That was a crucial move. Was that just feeling like, okay, now's the perfect time to use the Demiri ability? Right. Um, well, I had... I had resources to spare. I thought I could play the Demir ability, and then I had Oak Shield if something scared me in his hand. Mm -hmm. um, just sometimes with Demir, it's hard because you want to play spells, but you also want to use her ability. It's it's kind of a it's a good decision-making process each, each turn. Mm -hmm. So it's looking like this game is all but over. With that being said, I think it's going to be time to start up another giveaway soon. This could be good. Uh, getting down to what's going to be probably the last half hour of this stream. Yep, we're just about half hour away from uh, from finishing things out here. So stay tuned, guys. As soon as this game ends, we're going to do another giveaway. want to make sure that you guys have the opportunity to... Uh, here we go. So you're just going to, I'm assuming, use that Earthquake, kill off that Peddler, 
Yeah, there we go. GG. Well played, Smurf. That is another win. And you are now up 2-1 in this series as we're going into the fourth game. So kudos to you. That was a really well played game. Those two Abyssal Lords were just too hard for him to overcome there at the end. Um, and now that we've ended that game, it's time to start another raffle. So let's actually take a moment and go on over to our raffle. Where is it? There we go. That's what I was looking for. So I've got the raffle open on the screen. Guys, if you're just tuning in, this is a giveaway for a free pack of cards. Once things are all squared away on the server side and you have the ability to, after the stream is over, we will send you a code to your inbox that will give you a free pack of cards. So definitely follow the instructions on the screen. Type exclamation point raffle into the chat and this will enter you to win. You must be following the Duel of Champions Twitch TV channel to be able to win. If you are not following and you get selected for the drawing, it'll come up in these big red letters of pure shame on the screen. It's just, it's, it's a sad state of affairs. We had someone have that happen to them last week and, and I cried a little. It actually was really depressing. So I'm going to give you guys about another 30 seconds. I'm going to take a little bit of water from my Ubisoft water bottle because talking this much on stream is absolutely killing my throat. But I will do it for you guys because you're awesome. Absolutely love this community. Too good. All right, guys. Got about 15 seconds. And then we're going to pull out a another pack of cards to give away. And then we're going to get into the final game in this best of five series and uh, see how Smurf Burn pulls this out. I think um, you just asked me earlier and then we kind of got off track at how I felt about the Europeans talking a lot of, yeah, a lot of smack sorry, about the I, American it was, players. It was tough to, to keep on track when such an awesome play happened on the uh, screen, but please go for it while we're doing this raffle. Um. I was going to say, we haven't had the game that long. We've had it Three since months, when? Months. March? Like, not very long at all. No. Um, I feel like we're doing well for the amount of time we've played, and we're only going to get better. Mm -hmm. They've had this game a long time. They've had a long time to develop strategies and set up playgroups. Yeah. And I feel like if we set up some good playgroups and we go there and make a strong, strong, strong showing, and it starts picking up here in the States, it's going to be a lot different next year. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that the entire world's going to be a lot more developed in what this game has to offer by next year. Um, what we have to offer right now, though, is we got to offer up what we said we're going to offer, which is a free pack of cards. So I'm going to draw another pack of cards right now. Hope you guys have all entered. Hope everyone has followed the channel. And I am going to click on this button right now. Hollander was the last winner. Who's going to be the next one? Double Slip 26 is following the Duel of Champions channel and just joined, joined, you just joined Twitch TV today? Oh my gosh, Double Slip 26. Congratulations. What a good day to join Twitch TV. That is that's awesome. That's a pretty cool thing to to join on the the first day and and win something. That's cool. Congrats. Congrats to Double Slip 26. The raffle has been closed. Uh we'll do one more after this final game. But kudos to double slip for picking up a free pack of cards. That code will be coming to your inbox here on Twitch TV after this game is over. So greatly appreciate you tuning in on this stream today, just along with everybody else as well. Let us load up this fourth and final game in the series between Crixius and Smurfburn. Because Smurf, I want to see how you close this series out. Um, if it's anything like the rest of the games you've been playing, pretty solid to say the least. Mm -hmm. um, well, and go for it. We were saying before this deck is called the Myriad Fatties, but I did I I heavily altered it specifically to be Sun Dolphin. If if he wasn't playing Sun Dolphin, then I have no idea how the series would have turned out. Mm -hmm. um, and when I saw the hero in the first game, I, even though I lost the first game, I was still relieved. 
Sweet. Okay. So you say that you modified the deck to specifically beat Sandalfin. What did you do? Give us some insight. So for players that might be new to the game, why did this deck counter Sandalfin? Give your insight. Um, it was just able to stall. I took out some of the more aggressive creatures. That there's no juggernauts in the deck. Mm -hmm. um, there's no t tormentors. Um, and then I took out a lot of the earth damage spells because of the monsoon. Um, I only ran two earthquakes and three insect swarms. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to run more magic peddlers. And I just tried to run a lot of more kind of two drop, get in the way creatures that just try to stall this game out. Four Halls of Amnesia. I've seen some fatty decks with and without that, but I had to get the Song of the Lost. If I don't get the Song of the Lost, I'm going to lose. Right, right, because then he could just take those same fat creatures that you have on the field and demolish them, right? Run them into the ice. Yeah, just that, for those that don't know, that haven't seen, I mean, we only got to see it once in this uh, best of four so far, best of five, I guess, but we already know it's, this is the last game. Um, we only got to see it once. What this, the wombo combo that we're talking about that Sandalfin has? Ice Splinters. It's a spell that goes down on any row, and any creature that comes into that row takes damage, right? It takes two damage. Um, Song of the Lost is an epic spell that allows you to move creatures around the board indefinitely. So you can just move creatures in and out of those rows so that they continue to take damage till they die. So, very powerful. Only a few heroes have the access to the spells that are available uh, through the um, through what uh, school spells they have. Spell oh man, you can tell the stream's been going a long time. I'm tripping over my words. Spell schools <laughs> are available. Sandalfin being one of them. Um, while we're talking about things that are available, that Earth's Grasp, playing that super early this game, right on that second turn for you, that's huge, because now all those pals that are in his deck are completely useless. Absolutely. Um, it makes me feel so much better when I can play Earth Scraps. Sandalfin doesn't really have a way to disenchant. Um, he wasn't playing with one, so it's huge. This, this hand was a little slow, but I kept it because I had the Epic Spell Tutor, and I had the Earth Scraps. It's the only reason I kept it. Right, okay, so didn't want a mulligan just because, hey... I've got a couple cards I really want for this game. And at the same time, you got to feel comfortable, too, because you're like, well, even if I make a mistake here, I have one more chance because I have a game five on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got to make you feel a little bit comfier. And now seeing that you have another uh, Hellfire Maniac coming into your hand, it's one of those things of, man, i got to get to five might as fast as possible, right? Uh, but, right. but instead, you're actually opting to put the point into magic. I want to and... do the board wipe as well. Yeah, so opting right now to say, okay, I want to be clear that if, if he has the board filled out with creatures, I've got my Forbidden Flame. I can stall for another three turns, get to my five might, and use my Maniacs to defend myself. Does that sound Absolute. about right? Absolutely. Well, the, the Maniacs are both defensive and offensive. Um, they don't just stop their creatures from hitting me. They actively remove the creatures. And they also hit for three. Um, they're, they're, those are the backbone of the deck. I only run I run four of those and only two abyssal lords. All right. Okay. Wow. So it's just you don't. I mean, I couldn't imagine you'd want to run any more than two abyssal lords. Those seven resource creatures are just so hefty. I mean, if you pull, let's say you had four of those in your deck and you pulled them all in succession, like early in the game, right. you're screwing yourself at that point. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, for someone that might be a little bit newer to the game, I mean, we see I see a lot of new players. Um, <laughs> I like this. Someone is actually saying that uh, I broke the servers on purpose so that we could get more views on the stream. I like that. Uh, <laughs> while I love the fact that we have a crazy amount of viewers here tuning in with us right now, definitely didn't troll you that bad. I like to troll, but not like that, guys. Um, for people that are tuning in, we got a lot of new players here in the stream right now. A lot of new players here, Smurf. Um, deck building. Any general tips that you might have for them? Because we were just saying, we don't want to put too many fat creatures in because you could really screw yourself in the beginning if you pulled them all. Um, what other tips can you give them? Um, I know Crixus really helps a lot, the newer players. Uh, he had some good advice. Early on in the game, you focus on two abilities, spells, 
or might or might and fortunes. Um, don't try to go to all three at once, and to try to try to have a game plan. Just don't have big creatures. Try to decide what your deck wants to do. Right. And then and set a goal, and then have your deck achieve that goal. If you want to get damage in early and a clear path, then you're gonna want the cards to do that. A lot of players just want to put big big spells, big creatures in there, and things that look good. And while card advantage and good spells can be advantageous, you still there's a lot of decks that have a lot of small creatures and small spells, and it has a game plan, and that's why it's a good deck. Like send off and it's it's a three four one. He's playing three four two, but it's a it's a very low cost deck, and it's a tier one deck. Um, speaking of things that uh, you'd want to be looking out for, since we're talking about tips and all this good stuff, you, again, Hulse, uh, Hulse Amnesia, getting rid of that Song of the Lost. Again, he has only been able to use his combo with that card once in this entire series. So really preventing that board wipe mechanic that he has, uh, the biggest board wipe mechanic that a Sand Dolphin deck can have, and now those fat creatures are so much more likely to run wild again. So exactly, um, setting yourself up grass, for success, really. With and with the Earth's grass spot, I just I always feel very comfortable. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of with this deck that you created, knowing that Sandal and look at this. He pulls out the pow. This is actually pretty smart on his part to put he the pow. Uses it to buff the wolf captain. Correct. Get this, an extra damage in there. Yeah, and and that's the best use of that card that he could make right now, only because, and, and this is again just smart play um, from Crixius. He knows he's not going to be able to do damage with the pow, so instead of it laying there as a dead card in his hand, putting it next to the wolf captain to buff it. A, a wolf captain gets an extra point of damage for every unit that is next to it adjacently. So if you have a creature down the top, creature on the back, creature on the so on the bottom of it. He gets an extra point of damage, loses the dead card in his hand, uh, doesn't really matter. But you, on the other hand, say, I don't want none of that. Bl break off the ice shell, uh, ice shell with the fire and then forbidden flame, and suddenly we're back to an empty board. So. Um, and for those looking in chat, I just threw my deck up in chat, if anyone wants to look at it. That was the deck I played in this the finals. Cool. Awesome. Um, do you want to walk us through a little bit about that deck since you just posted it in there? Uh, if everyone wants to go take a look at it, like what your thoughts were on putting the deck together? I mean, we, we talked a little bit about it, but now that you can actually see um, with you know clear with clarity, really, what was in the deck, uh, just some finer points of it? Um, like I said, I took out the Juggernauts. Um, I put in a lot of two powers, two resource cost creatures and to kind of delay the game. And my goal was to delay this game. It's not going to work against every deck, but that's what I felt worked against Sendolphin. Um, I took out some of the board wipes, the earthquakes, because those hit my own creatures, and because they're just dead if he has a monsoon. Um, I kept up three insect swarms just because they're they're so vicious if he doesn't have the monsoon. It's almost it's almost worth the, the risk. The reward is if he doesn't have a monsoon, then that it's definitely worth having him in the deck. Right. Now, this game isn't looking like it's going the best for you right now. Um, he's at slot 20 life. You are getting close to being taken to a game 5. Um, he's throwing down ice splinters near the wolf captain. Uh, is this something that's making you a little nervous? Or do you still feel comfortable because you know that you have all these giant creatures waiting to come out? I still feel very comfortable this game. Um, if you look at my hand, that's all going to be hitting the board soon. Um, he can't play POWs. He can't sneak in the damage anymore. Um, every 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 damage source he's going to have, I'm going to have a turn to deal with it and play something mm -hmm. in his way. And I mean, if you look at my hand, it's just brutal. I have the Bloater. I actually have the Doombringer, which is a combination. If we get that uh, Week of the Dead, that's a that's a board wipe that you can't sideboard against. There's no card that stops that from happening. The monsoon doesn't affect it. Right. Um, so I felt very confident. I have four big creatures in my hand and a reset button. Yeah, that's that's a good way of putting it, a reset button. Just wipe the board, say, hey, let's try this again. See if we can do any better this time. Um, 
do I like spiders? That is a weird question to ask here. Um, what 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 <laughs> what brings that? Okay. How will prices to I? Now even my boss is trolling me. I don't know what's happening here. This is good. Um, what's Smurf? I apologize for for these people around me. I can't keep focus when when people are. And I have this one over here saying, don't apologize, we're awesome. Love it. Uh, there <laughs> will be another raffle after this game, Shalon. So definitely, as soon as this replay finishes, um, we will be doing one final raffle and wrapping things up. Which, speaking of which, Smurf, uh, I kind of want to give you some time to go over any topics that might be on your mind as well, because we're getting close to the end. You took time out of your morning to join us. Um, and talk about these games and talk with the community. Uh, was there anything in particular that you wanted to bring up with the community to uh, to give any shout outs in particular? Um, to, you know, say anything to anybody that might be watching uh, before we start wrapping this up here probably in the next 10 minutes. Well, I already gave uh, shout outs to my testing partner, Nellicombs, but I wanted to give Crixus a shout out too. He was a, a top notch competitor, great guy, great streaming, and I like what he does for the new players. So if you're still in there, Crixus, uh, shout out to you as well. Um, he's a great guy, and hopefully we can get Team North America going. And any anybody that has any questions, you can add me, you can add Crixus, you can add Dietrich42 on game, and we can all, we can all help you out. Um, we like new players. And just the community in general, you know, all my interactions when I'm playing online, is they're always great. Everyone's very respectful, and I wanted to say that as well. Awesome. Yeah, and I agree. I feel like we have such a great community, and um, this is going to be my chance to say thank you uh, to you um, when you come on, uh, simply because with community members, I mean, we joke a lot about how, um, like in the, the Hangout last week, we joked a lot about how you love to trash talk. Um, but at the end of the day, look at what you, you're doing here, right? You, you're coming on, mm -hmm. you're analyzing, you're helping the community out. You even just said, hey, come add me. I want to have uh, a lot of fun with the community, etc." cetera. Right. Um, we need more people like that. So kudos. Thank you to you. Thank you to Crixius, um, even Dietrich, uh, for helping uh, build this community here in North America. Because I do think we're a little bit behind um, the Europeans just simply because they've had more time, again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that you guys are doing a lot to grow this North American side of things to the point where we're going to have a damn good fighting chance against uh, the Europeans, the Asians, uh, that are all going to be coming together for the Road of Paris finals. Um, so, and hey, look at this. The, the, we got the European community managers here, even in the chat. Kamundi over here saying they're the mighty Europeans. You gotta find, you gotta find a way to to, to prove them wrong. Right. And I think you're on your way, man. I, I completely appreciate all the hard work and effort that you're putting into this, uh, doing the play testing with Crixius, etc. So mm -hmm. kudos, thank you. Uh, it makes our job that much more. Uh, entertaining and awesome to be able to see these players rising up and, and, and battling for this coveted world championship. So um, I guess one of my final questions is going to be, you know, do you have any expectations for the world championship? Do you feel like, is this something that you feel like you're going to be able to go in there and win uh, to train with this new expansion and take the players out of the equation and just go and win. Will you be able to do that or, or do um, you have other expectations? I mean my expectations are to do well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to do well. I'm going to play test and hopefully the new expansion is going to shake things up enough where everything hasn't quite settled yet. And then we can really have an equal playing field because they've had so much time to play test with cards. They've had so much, such a good card pool. This really I think is a great opportunity because the new expansion is really going to level, level the playing field for us. That's how we're looking at it. And we're going to use everything we can at our disposal to play test, to make decks, and come in there and, and prove them wrong and show that even though we've only had the game for a couple of months, we can still pull out a win. That's awesome. That is so cool. I cannot wait to see these finals. Um, again, it's only about, what, a little over a month and a half away? So, gotta, I mean, you got everything all squared away? You got your passport ready? 
It's a long flight. I do. I have it ready. I'm getting my immunization soon. I don't know what crazy diseases they have over there in Europe. <laughs> oh, was that, a, was that a little bit of trash talk that I just heard? Like, was that a, oh, I don't, I'm not worried about their skills. I'm just worried about what diseases yeah. they have over in Paris. I'm, Pretty much, yeah. That was, that was kind of, that was a little feisty. Wow, Smurf. That's, now you're throwing the burns on the, the Europeans. That's... They're going to they're gonna have to fight back. I'm excited. It's going to be cool to see how you all match up against each other. Uh, shots fired, they're saying in chat. I like it. So uh, this is about the time, since we're getting ready to wind things up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> since we're getting ready to wind things up here, um, I want to give the chat the chance to ask any other final questions they might have for Smurf Burn, I will definitely throw them his way. So guys, if you have anything you want to know from what is currently the top North American Duel of Champions player, please throw them in chat. We'll ask your questions. And <laughs> I can't ask that. that. That's not something I want to talk about in mass. Sorry. That's that's not going to be brought up in the, in the stream. Um... But <laughs> if you have any questions, throw them in. We'll get those to Smurf Burn here. We'll finish up those last few minutes of the replay as these Hellfire Maniacs are running wild on the board again. And, uh, and then we'll do a final raffle to finish things off. Um, do North Americans know how to play the game? I think Smurf Burn's proving that that's, that's, a, that's a pretty fair assessment. Um, but... Okay, if you had a chance to change one card, let's let's change that question up a little bit. Someone just asked that. If you had to change, if you had the choice, if you thought one card was overpowered, let's do that, and you had to nerf it, or you wanted to see it change in the expansion, what would it be, Smurf? Um, to be honest, the one card I don't like seeing the most, I f it's just uh, is it the Sword of the Sea? The Strength of the Sea. Strength of the Sea. That just. Every time I see it, it's just so good. It goes into any deck with creatures that is water power. I think I would like to see it cost four and four, or maybe just give just give the fortune ward. But the the damage in the fortune ward seems like a lot to me. Right. Yeah. Um, fortune ward's tough. I mean, especially if you're if that's just such a good counter to things that are like stall decks or mm -hmm. or slow poke or and that's. I mean, that's right there. People are talking about slow poke not being, you know able to be countered. Any deck that has water, if you have, can pull out Strength of the Sea, I mean, and they don't have a Dispel or something like that, right. that's well, tough. And it's, just, it's the Fortune Ward and the damage for the low cost. I mean, it's just a shoe. Why would you play a creature deck and not play that, that spell? Yeah. And when you see any deck that could possibly play a spell, have to play it competitive, then at that point, you, you look at if it could change. But we could wait for the new set. Maybe with the new meta that it sets out, maybe Strength of the Sea decks won't won't be around. Maybe they won't be competitive, and then it, it, we won't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, I mean, there is one unique new creature per faction coming. Uh, that's going to change up the game quite a bit. There's new epic spells coming. That's going to change up the game quite a bit. People are going to have the Ultra Wishes. They're going to be able to acquire them easier. You know, if they mm -hmm. want that one card specifically, they're going to be able to grab that, you know, save up those wild cards and purchase that card. So... You well, know. Strength of the Sea was also on the Infernal Pit. It was voted yeah. the uh, epic spell people wanted the most. And after that, everybody had it. That's very true. Um, I remember when that happened. That was actually back right when I first got this position here, if I remember correctly, when I came on board as the North American Community Manager here. So that was a little ways ago. Um, but yeah, I remember everyone grabbing that Strength of the Sea, and then we had Demiria in the pit as well recently. Um, so now, right now, we're getting to the end of this game. Let's take a look back here. Let's finish things out. Uh, Smurf, what's the first card you'll be getting via I Ultra Wishes, they're asking in chat? Um, I really, well, like I said before, I like to play Malik, and I think I want to finish my play set of Banshees. Oh, um, okay. okay. So being able to get those Banshees you're missing, how many do you have now? I have two right now. So, yeah, that's going to be, that'll be huge for you then. The difference between two and four is astronomical. Right. So uh, we know for a fact, even though the Ice Spinners is out, You've been so adamant about getting that Song of the Lost out of his deck. He has no way to clear this out. Even if he had Song of the Lost, you've got all four rows all locked down. Mm -hmm. And he's pretty much stuck at this point as you're getting ready to wrap up 
your trip to Paris, your chance at the World Championship. We see a wind gust here, but it's really not doing much. It just kind of does a small little bit of damage to your Lilum. Um, and Crixius is trying, finding any way to prevent 7 damage on him next turn mm -hmm. so that he can at least make it to game 5. Unfortunately, though, it's looking like all but in the bag for you at this point, for him, at least, right. you know. So and, it, and like I said before, this deck was a chance. I took a chance hoping he'd play Sindolphin. I playtested it specifically against his deck. And if he would have switched it up, I have no idea what would have happened. Yeah. Um, you might be interviewing someone else today. Right. Yeah. So if that's the case, I mean, when you're going into a tournament, and, and I guess this will show a little bit into your mindset for when you go to Paris. Are you going to be flexible? Do you Will you have multiple strategies planned? Or do um, you think you're going to just have a be-all, end-all? Absolutely. I'm going to have multiple decks planned. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the, the, I, when you play test, you're not only play testing against what the tiers are, but then you're play testing against decks that are good against the tier decks. Mm -hmm. And it just gets so in-depth. And you can, you can over-plan, you can under-plan. Um, but definitely having multiple options, seeing what's popular... I don't think that any of the European players are going to be telling me what they're going to be playing, but right. but I know I know what's good and I, and I do I run into them every once in a while online and I recognize them when I do and I've I've seen what's picked up and what hasn't. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, also that all that's going to be water under the bridge once this new expansion comes out. Mm -hmm. For sure. So as we just saw, that was the end of the fourth game with you winning the series three to one against Crixius, a very worthy opponent here in North America who uh, will be now fighting as well through the wildcard tournament, trying to make a second North American representative for the Road to Paris finals, the grand finals, the world championship coming very soon. So stay tuned, guys, if you are here in the chat to see who wins, who becomes the 2013 Duel of Champions world champion. Uh, Smurfburn, I cannot thank you enough for joining us here today. Um, before we say our final goodbyes, I'm going to do one last raffle because everyone already is freaking out in chat. I haven't even I haven't even said anything. I didn't even say anything about this, and we've already got people going nuts. I did say I was going to do it, but I didn't say we were opening it yet. In fact, everyone that's point everyone that's typing right now is wasting their time because I haven't opened it yet. Isn't that sad? That's kind of like I feel bad for them. Like you got you're going to have to type again. All right, guys, I'm going to stop trolling. Let's open this up for you. All right, and open, open, open. I hit draw instead of open. I don't know why I draw. See, but you know what? Here, this is a perfect, this is good. This is good that this happened because I want you guys to see if, if Rasta Joint 15 here would have been the winner, he would not have been able to win anyways because he's not following us. That's sad. Do you see that? Do you see that heart? It's not full. That's depressing. So make sure you guys are following the channel because if you're not, you do not have the chance to win. So we'll give you guys about 30 more seconds so that you can enter the raffle. Misty over here says she's going to win. I don't think you need to let her win. You need as many people to enter as possible so that you can make sure this chick next to me with the blue hair doesn't win. Can't let that happen. I guess you just put a bleachers back there, really. I know, right? Like, we have so many people walking by and everything. We we need to get more people on here talking to you, Smurf. It's it's good times. But all right, guys, let's get this final raffle out of the way. <laughs> all right, guys, here we go. We're gonna raffle this final pack of cards for the day and then we're going to end this team stream with smurf burn the north american champion for 2013 who's going to win this last sooty in the sky i like your icon sooty that is an awesome little yoda congratulations for grabbing that last pack of cards thank you for following us guys you are all awesome i'm going to get these packs of cards out right now appreciate you all tuning in joining us today and we are going to wrap things up right now. Smurfburn, you are the man. Thank you so much. Good luck. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of you 
in the coming weeks as you prepare for your road to Paris to try to win the 2013 World Championship. Any last things before we head out, man? Um, I think I said all I wanted to say. Um, hopefully we can go there and make a strong showing. Trixus, good luck. Um, and the top 16 will be rooting for you. And uh, it would be nice to go with another North American player and get first and second.